morning uh, everyone. I'm uh, Benjamin Sultan. I'm a researcher at uh, IRD, which is the French Research Institute for Development. And I'm a climatologist and uh, I use a lot of climate models and uh, look at the impact of uh, climate change on, uh, on agriculture, on health, or uh, on water resources. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is the, the I will introduce you the, 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 the platform, the web platform we have developed uh, at IRD, which is a platform which provides uh, climate uh, information, climate data from uh, the different climate models uh, over the world. And these data are, uh, are freely available in Africa, in South America, in Southeast Asia. And so I will first introduce you what are the, the, the climate models. So what I speak uh, about when I say uh, climate model, what is a climate model and uh, what is the resolution? What are the, the equation uh, in the in such models we used to, to see in different IPCC reports? And uh, then I will present you uh, briefly the, the different features of the platform. And by the end uh, of this training, you will have a, a couple of minutes to uh, to train yourself uh, in uh, trying to, to to get data from the platform. You will have some work to do, so that I can see you you, you have the the tool. Uh, you can just use the tool easily. And uh, I wanted to say that my English is not very good. And uh, I know the network uh, as well is not so good. So maybe the combination of two will be quite uh, painful for you. So <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, please do not hesitate to uh, interrupt me uh, anytime if you, you do not understand my, uh, my poor English or if there are some uh, uh, problems in the connection. So first of all, in the I wanted to uh, to give you some elements of context. And we know that there is a, a lack of knowledge about uh, the impacts of climate change in the South. You know that there are IPCC reports, these are global reports. And in these reports, in fact, uh, there are uh, data, there are information, there are uh, knowledge, uh, there are um, uh, a lot of uh, work uh, in uh, the Southern countries, but uh, frankly, it's far less than uh, what you have in uh, European or in, in American countries. You have uh, on the, the, the bottom of this uh, of the of the map, you have uh, a climate change adaptation research focused on the different individual countries, and you can see that uh, most of the research on adaptation uh, has occurred in. Uh, in US has occurred in uh, in East Asia or in Australia in Europe, but not so much in uh, in Africa. And it's also the uh, a problem where a lot of um, uh, very uh, little work has been done uh, in Africa, in Middle East, uh, and also in Latin America. And also there is a little, very little involvement on, of African researchers in studies. You have uh, here the, the, the map of climate change studies with locally based authors. And you can see that uh, it's very dissymmetric between the different countries with very few uh, authors, uh, African authors in, um, in, uh, in Mali, in Chad, uh, or uh, even in, uh, in, the, in, in some countries of uh, East Africa. So, there is a little involvement of African researchers in the studies. And we believe that this knowledge gap could be linked. It's not the only reason, but it could be linked to uh, the fact that uh, existing tools uh, then do not meet the specific needs of the Southern countries. So there is kind of lack of expertise on the type of data, the type of climate data we, we could use to uh, investigate the impact of climate change, the, the different methods to use the infrastructure uh, of computing uh, climate indices. Uh, there are a lot of technical problems to, to download the data with sometimes a, a, a network is not uh, adapted in, uh, in Africa. 
And what we have done uh, at IRD, we have tried to, uh, to develop uh, a network of multidisciplinary partners that could be a vector for disseminate uh, information, for, for training like uh, we have uh, uh, today on climate data with the aim of developing, uh, strengthening uh, impact studies in the different uh, sectors in Africa. So first of all, what is a climate model? So a climate model is a numerical representation of the climate. The climate models I'm going to, uh, to speak about today uh, are the models that we use for, uh, for, um, for, uh, for making climate, pro climate change projection in the next uh, centuries. So in these models, we have the different processes uh, at play at this uh, century scale, so very large scales. And we have in these uh, models, different components. You have the atmosphere, you have the, the cryosphere with the, 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 the sea ice, you have the, the biosphere with the soil, with vegetation, and uh, all, this, um, all these components are represented by uh, different uh, equations that are solved at uh, 10, uh, 10 minutes time scale, that are solved at, at a very large scale. And uh, uh, they are usually coupled uh, together and with these models, you can play like uh, you have, uh, like you can add a virtual hearth. You can play by changing uh, pollution, by changing CO2 emission, by changing uh, the, uh, the, the rates of deforestation, by uh, increasing agriculture or decreasing uh, uh, the, the, the land use for uh, agriculture and look at what could be the, 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 the climate with such a change. So you can uh, also answer uh, to uh, very important questions that are, uh, uh, the first question is how has the climate already been affected by emissions? So it's a really important question and you can use by prescribing um, historical um, CO2 emission, historical greenhouse gases emission and look at in your uh, model if you could with this uh, historical emission, if you could uh, represent the, the, the climate of the past. So you can compare how the model represents the climate of the past and how you could uh, look at the effect of uh, greenhouse emissions. And the, the, the second important question is uh, you can uh, really, you can produce uh, um, uh, scenarios for the future, so you, you can see how will emission trajectories influence the climate of the future. If you we uh, we are going to uh, if you are going to respect the 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 Paris Agreement and trying to reduce emission uh, and reduce the warming at one point five degrees and Celsius, or uh, if we are going to keep on uh, increase uh, the the emission uh, CO2, uh, the CO2 emissions. So it's, um, you can see what could be the difference in terms of climate. So you, you can do that with the different climate models. So these models uh, are, um, the different components are described with the, the, the equations, different equations of fluid mechanics, of thermodynamics, and, and uh, as well as the on the principles of mass and energy conservation. And we describe this equation uh, in the globe, which is the globe is cut in two small cubes. You have here the, the, the picture of the different cubes over the, gold, the globe. And these are called the, the meshes. And the equation are solved uh, with super computer in each mesh of the, of the globe. So you have the, an example of the, the different meshes here, where we could, uh, for each mesh, we have the, for the atmosphere, we have uh, the different differential equations that could be used to determine the, the temperature, to determine the humidity, to determine the, the wind at each time step. Uh, you, you can do that over the ocean, but the ocean, uh, does not have exactly the same property than the atmosphere, but you can use also um, the differential uh, equations. You have also a vegetation or soil uh, mesh, soil meshes that uh, use 
Continental uh, Surface Models to simulate exchange of water, exchange of, uh, of energy between the soil, the, 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 the biomass, and uh, between the atmosphere. And you have also different parameterization for uh, some of the processes such as uh, uh, rainfall, which is empirically uh, parameterized in the model. It's important to know that the, 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 this climate model has strongly uh, evolved over the time, and uh, there is more and more complexity with the, with the time. And these models have been created in the mid 70s. And at the beginning, they were very simple with only the atmosphere. There, there, were, there were no ocean, there were no uh, biosphere, but only the atmosphere. And uh, with what we know about um, at the beginning uh, about the, the greenhouse gases, which is a phenomenon which is very well known since the, the, the beginning of the, the 70s. And so we, at the beginning, the, these models were very simple with only a CO2 emission, with only uh, uh, the effect of temperature, the effect of change in terms of rainfall at very low resolution. And then after, with the time, we increase the complexity of these models by adding the land surfaces. So uh, the exchange between the uh, of energy, the exchange of water between the surface and the atmosphere. We then add the clouds. And then after, uh, we, uh, we added the ocean with the first ocean models, which is based on the similar equation that we have in the atmosphere. And we also add the volcanic activity, which could have an impact on the climate. Uh, we add also chemistry. We add the carbon cycle, the rivers, the, the, the aerosols. So the complexity of these models have strongly evolved with, the, the, with time and with the different IPCC reports. But it's important to, uh, to say that even in the mid 70s, we have uh, started to, uh, to provide climate scenarios, to provide uh, climate change scenarios, and also evidence of the fact that uh, human activity has strongly increased uh, greenhouse uh, gases emission and had strongly uh, started to change the climate. So even in the mid 70s, with very simple models, we have started to give scenarios and uh, which are not so much different from what we are observing today. So here to, um, to illustrate this point, you have a time series of uh, observations of global temperature, so global temperature changes in uh, degrees Celsius from 1970 to 2020. So it's the black uh, line, the black tick line, and you have the different projections we had since the, the, the 70s to up to uh, 2007. So it's not the, the, the latest uh, projections. And you can see that uh, with each color, you have different kinds of models with different complexity. Uh, what we simulate for, uh, for, the, 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 for, for the climate we have today. So you can see that there is a high dispersion in the projection of different models, but you can also see that uh, the model were quite good to simulate the increase of uh, temperature we have today. So we are quite confident in, um, in the projection of temperatures coming from the models, even if there are large uncertainties in the amplitude of this, uh, this warming. And even if uh, we, there are a lot of things that we don't know about climate change, there are a lot of process, missing processes in the models, but uh, by the end, they are quite good. To, uh, to predict the, the increase of temperature because this increase of temperature is driven by very well-known processes that are the greenhouse uh, effect. And it's important to know that uh, there is not only one climate model, but there are a lot of, lot of them, a lot of climate models, more than 30 climate models around the world. Each uh, 
climate institute in the world, its, uh, its big climate institute in the world, has developed his own uh, climate model with his own parametrization of rainfall, with, uh, with his own um, representation of different processes, with different level of complexity, with um, with uh, adapted to his own uh, infrastructure. And they have developed a lot of model and the climate community, community has spent a lot of time to uh, compare the different climate models. And uh, what are what they they do? They are uh, organizing uh, international intercomparison uh, exercise with different uh, aspects of the model. So they are trying to um, to compare how the model represents the cloud, how they represent the climate of the past of the last uh, twenty uh, of the last uh, thousand years. They are trying to compare the model, how they, they represent the carbon cycle, how they are sensitive to a land use change, such as deforestation, how they, they could uh, simulate the ocean, the, the, the melting uh, of, the, of the ice. So there, there, are, there are a lot of exercises to compare the model. And the, the, maybe the most known exercise is the scenarios uh, exercise which is the, the, the comparison of the different scenarios of uh, CO2 and uh, greenhouse gases emissions. So we compare each uh, climate models of the world, how they, they, they simulate the, the climate with different scenarios emissions. And all, the, all you see in the IPCC report is based on this intercomparison. In fact, it's not one projection of one model, it's projection of several climate models that are compared with similar uh, uh, conditions, similar emissions, uh, greenhouse gases emissions, uh, similar uh, different conditions, and so that we could compare these models, we could average the projection of different models, and we could also see the uncertainty associated with these models. The results of uh, such uh, such a model is the the the, the fact that it, they could provide evidence of the effect of human activities on uh, on climate. You have here a, an example of such uh, such an evidence of the effect of human activity on climate. You have on the black line you have the observed climate uh, increase in global surface temperature from. Uh, 1850 to, to 2020. Uh, so it's the black line. And then we have tried with the, the different climate models we have in the world, we have tried to simulate this observation of temperature right, to see how the models are good to represent the observed uh, increase of temperature. And we have done that with two kinds of simulations. The first simulation, which is a simulation in green, it's the simulation using only natural variability. So you note that uh, climate is highly variable, even without human activity. It's viable because of the, the orbital uh, parameters, because of solar activity, which could change the climate, because of volcanic activity, which could also change the climate. So we have done a first simulation in green with climate models trying to simulate the observed temperature and the historical observed temperature just using natural variability. And you can see in this figure that uh, we cannot simulate the observed increase uh, of temperature just using uh, natural variability. Then we use the same climate models, the same natural variability, but we add also human activity, which means that we add the increase of uh, CO2, the increase of methane, uh, of uh, the increase of different uh, greenhouse gases. And you can see how the, um, uh, how the, 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 the climate projection is different. It's the, the simulation in red. And you can see that the simulated uh, temperature is quite close from what we observed uh, in the past we now are able to simulate the increase of temperature 
after the, the, the mid 70s. So what it means that, it means that without human activity in the model, we cannot explain, we cannot simulate, we cannot explain the increase, the recent increase of temperature. So such kind of, uh, of numerical column, such kind of figure, such kind of results is a numerical evidence of the effect of uh, human activity on, cl of cl on climate. Then we can use these models to see how temperature will change in the future. So what we have done here, we have CO2 emission scenarios with different colors in, uh, on the left panel, with different color. In blue, it's the, it's the um, uh, um, a pathway where we could reduce drastically the greenhouse gases emission. So it's the, the most op op optimistic pathway where we could uh, achieve the, 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 the Paris Agreement, we could uh, where um, we could reduce strongly the, the, the greenhouse gases emission. So we are very successful in uh, in our um, fight against uh, climate change. And you have also other emission scenarios in uh, in red or uh, in dark red, where now we could not reduce the emission uh, the greenhouse gases emission. We are um, there are a lot of uh, political aspects that uh, lead to a, to a failure of the, the Paris Agreement. It's the, the color in red. And on the, on the right, you have the, what could uh, be, uh, <clears throat> what could lead such kind of uh, CO2 emission scenarios, what they could uh, be, how they could be translated into global temperature changes. And what you can see, is that uh, there is an increase of temperature. So these are uh, results from the different climate models. And you can see that there is an increase of temperature for all of these scenarios, even in the, the case where you could reduce drastically the emission of uh, the, the CO2 emission, you have still an increase of temperature. And uh, you can also see that uh, before 2050, there is a kind of similar evolution in each uh, CO2 emission scenarios, which means that even uh, in the case of a sharp decline of, of emissions, we could uh, could not have uh, discernible effects uh, in um, in about 20 years on the planetary on the temperature uh, at the globe scale. So it means that uh, all effort we, we do in terms of uh, increases, uh, decreasing uh, greenhouse uh, gases, um, all these efforts uh, could not be translated very quickly in terms of uh, changes in temperature. So it's an important point, uh, and it could explain uh, sometimes that fact that uh, the, the different policymakers are. Uh, not able to to take decision because they know that uh, they will not see any effect before 20 or 30 years so you can see that uh, by the end of the time series by the end of the century you have strong difference between different scenarios in a case in the the, the blue case you can see that uh, if we could reduce drastically the co2 emission we can see that uh, we could expect that the temperature will not decrease more than 1.5 degrees or 2 degrees compared to the pre-industrial level. But if we keep on um, emitting a lot of uh, CO2, uh, you can see that uh, the temperature is going to increase and uh, will be up to uh, 3 to 4, to even to 5 degrees in some scenarios, which could be uh, very detrimental for uh, a lot of countries in the world, a lot of activities such as agriculture, but also in the ocean, like um, coral, uh, coral reefs, we could be strongly affected by high level of uh, warming. So what about uh, Africa? You have here the projections of temperature in Africa. 
you have on the, the on the left you have temperature you have um, uh, you have maximum temperature you have minimum temperature you have also sorry you have also precipitation and on the right you have the maximum daily precipitation which means it's uh, extreme precipitation and these are differences at uh, between the future and uh, the historical period in the in the different climate models these are average of the different climate models so these are average and differences at different global warming level you have uh, on the top the the very low level of global warming 1.5 degree you have two degrees and uh, on the bottom you have the four degrees global warming which is the the, the most pessimistic uh, scenario and what you can see is that uh, in terms of temperature there is an increase of temperature in africa in uh, all uh, level of warming so we are going to have uh, some more increase of global warming in africa even in the most optimistic uh, global warming uh, scenario and um, but this warming is going to uh, to to uh, to increase with the level of global warming you can see that the, the four degrees global warming could lead to uh, an increase of temperature in africa mainly in south africa in the in the sahel in the sahara there is a large increase that could even uh, um, exceed the, the the four degrees global warming so it could be even five or uh, somewhere uh, sometime in some location five uh, five point five degrees which is very high and uh, which could have a strong impact on uh, on agriculture but also on water resources then you have uh, on the left on the on the right you have the, the projection in terms of, of precipitation and you can see that uh, they are less uniform than what we have on uh, on temperature. You have some regions where precipitation is going to decrease, and it's the case in uh, in the west of the of the Sahel. It's the case in in uh, in the south of Africa, where the the precipitation is expected to to decrease with global warming. And you have also some region where um, precipitation is expected to increase with the global warming especially in the in the Sahel where it's going to uh, to increase in the center of Sahel but also in East uh, Africa where we expect an increase of the of the rainfall and on the on the right you have the the extreme of daily precipitation so the 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 really intense uh, rainy event um, and you can see that the, the the rainy event, this extreme event, is going to uh, increase. is expected to increase everywhere in Africa. So in some countries, we are going to have a decrease in global rainfall, but an increase in terms of uh, of extremes, which means that uh, it could be very problematic in some way where you can have a drought, then after flood, then after drought. So uh, very big problems uh, for for people or for uh, for agriculture. 